everyone, I'm Abby Reader, and welcome to my dairy farm here in Glamorganshire in springtime. I'm a third generation farmer and today I'm going to take you on a virtual farm visit of the farm. Let's go. So why do British dairy farmers do what they do? Well, it all comes down to this. Right, so morning milking is just finished and these girls are going back out to grass. So generally in the springtime, a lot of herds in Britain will turn their cows out to graze. We've got one big block of land. It's right around our sheds in a big ring and these girls are going out to graze. It is breakfast time here on the farm and the girls are out grazing. If we look at the grass, it's a very, very important resource for producing milk. Cows are very interesting grazers. They use these massive long tongues. They've got a tongue that's about two foot long and they'll use it to stretch around that grass, grip it and tear it out. So they're really good at grazing grass to all sorts of different lengths. So if we've got bits of short grass, bits of long grass, that's really good for attracting different insects, different birds. We know we've got a lot of bats around here as well. So they love being around cows. Now in terms of grazing, what we've got here is one big field. It's about eight acres. And to give you a rough idea, one acre is the size of a football pitch. But what we've done is divided it into three sections. So the importance of this is making sure that we graze one section of the field efficiently. We'll call it mob grazing. They'll be on here for about 24 to 36 hours, and then they're off and they're into the next section, which means this piece can immediately be rested and start to regrow. That is so important for carbon footprint because we have to be very efficient with every blade of grass that we grow here on the farm. Okay, so we are in the carving pen. We've got two very special little girls here, twin girls, which is really unusual. Cows aren't supposed to have twins and especially to have twin females. So these will be the next generation of our dairy herd. In two years time, they will be fully grown adult and they'll be producing milk for you guys. Also born yesterday was this little beef calf who stood behind Yoan. This is an Aberdeen Angus. So this little calf will be fully grown in two years time and that will go into the meat chain and that's gonna produce beef for everyone. Right, so Yoan is now gonna give a demonstration of calf feeding. He's got a bottle of fresh cow's milk Take it away. Now this is liquid gold for farmers. It's really important. So when the cows are in in the winter, they are clearly producing a lot of these. So what we're gonna do is follow that cow pat. And I'm gonna show you what we do throughout the winter. So we're gonna use a tractor and we're gonna scrape this pat all the way down the yard. Are you following this cow pat? So this cow pat is going to arrive to the end of the yard and it's going to drop down through these slats and it works on a weir system and exits the shed. So, using some incredibly thick pipe, this cow pat will exit that weir system with a massive pump and it will go into that tower. That is full of cow poo. That is our fertilizer for the summer. Then, what are we going to do with it? It's really important for putting it out in the fields. We use it to make the grass grow. We use it to grow other crops here on the farm. But how do we get it out of there? We use another massive pump and something called an umbilical, which is like a giant hose pipe, and it's about 15 centimetres in diameter. And we use pressure to force that slurry out into the field. Follow me. Right. Woo, we're mad up. So that is about 500 meters of pipe and it goes another 500 meters in that direction. But basically it's bringing the fertilizer out to the field. So we remember now, cows eat grass, convert it to milk, 
They also convert it into cow pats. So that's two things they give us, food and fertiliser. We make sure this pat gets back on this field and back into the ground and grows the grass again. And it's one big cycle. We are in a very important shed here. This is what a lot of people call the cow's bedroom. These are what we call cubicles. It is where an individual cow will lie. And interestingly, cows will actually lie next to their mates, usually in the same part of the shed all the time. So what we'll have is a cow who's going to walk into here and then she wants to lie down. Now we need to remember that we want her to be really comfortable. So it's very important that the mattress, and we call these a mattress, the mattress they're on is very soft. So as a farmer, I have to be prepared to drop to my knees, the same as my cow when she wants to lie down. We've also got some bendy cubicles here. So we think about it now, our cow's gonna walk into the cubicle, gonna drop on her knees, drop on her front knees first, and then put her back end down. And because we've got these bendy cubicles, which I have to say are a lot of fun, um, it just means that if she does get up and she happens to bump, everything's gonna move, so she's not gonna hurt herself. And then the final amazing part of this is the hairbrush. Okay, this is brilliant. She can scratch her chin hair on here, they love that, and also her head hair underneath. As you can see, they use it a lot. There's a bit of a build-up of grease here, but we will clear that out through the summer, ready for next winter. So this is cow enrichment. It's a cow brush. It's not really for their hair, although it is quite nice for grooming. It's really just to make them feel better. So during the winter, when they're inside, they can come up, they can knock into it and make sure they get a nice scratch. So what is about to happen now, we're about to start milking. Cows are behind me, let's go. Okay, so first off, we need to remember the cows have been outside, so we need to get their teats clean. This is iodine, we spray it on the teats. Once we've done that, we get a piece of paper towel. We use paper towel because it's biodegradable. And we give those teats a bit of a wipe. So that's to make sure everything is nice and clean. Then we will strip a little bit of milk from the cow, just like that. That encourages the cow to relax and a little bit of milk left down. It's also a little bit ticklish, which is why she's hopping a bit. And then we start the unit. We'll drop down and vacuum will start. Put this onto the teeth. There we go, and the computer takes over. So the key thing is, vacuum does not suck the milk out of the cow's teeth, okay? If she does not want to give milk, she isn't gonna give it. What the vacuum does is gently take the milk away. But actually inside here is a small massaging motion. And that's what encourages the milk to come out of the teeth. And then the vacuum will just take the milk, it'll go down this pipeline here, and it will go off to our milk tank and be chilled, ready for you guys um, to be collected. If you've ever walked past the farm before and wondered what one of these is, it's a feed bin. And this particular bin happens to be full of this, which is soya. As a farm, we are committed to buying soya only from North America and Canada. So it comes from farms like mine. But at the same time, we're very conscious that we do need to cut back on the amount of soya that we're using. This particular soya happens to be what we call soya hulls. So it's not actually the soya bean. What we do in the, this country is we import soya we take what we need for human food and then we're left over with something called a hull. So it's like the shell that the soya has come from. And this is what we feed to our cows. So they're effectively feeding a waste product. Now that still doesn't really excuse our industry from trying to think a bit more responsibly about the soya that we use and whether we do actually need to use it. And all of that comes back down to grass, which we've talked a lot about here today. If we can get better grass, richer grass, better varieties, breed it better, make it work better for our cows, then we're likely to see a lot less of this being used on farms. And, and for me, that's something that is, is really important and something we're striving for. So I hope you have enjoyed our spring virtual farm tour and make sure you look up an open farm Sunday near you in June. Cheers.